Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers uh, in London. I'm looking today at a book from Edward Elgar. It's got a simple title, but it's quite a big book, as you'll see in a minute. It's called Environmental Regulation. Now, it's been edited by John uh, Mel, um, Mackel Downey, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, and Sharon uh, Mackel Downey. I hope that that's the right pronunciation. I think it's McEldowney is, is the correct name for their uh, surnames. Um, the book itself is actually quite heavy. Um, it's a very interesting book. That's the front of it. It's a spine. This is a heavy book. That's the back of it. And it runs to quite a large amount of pages. It's nearly a thousand pages in total. Uh, what it is again, it's a compilation, there's no index at the back, you can see that's the last page, there's no actual index as such. But what you do have, let me start at the front, you've got, that's actually the front uh, copy, you see um, Professor uh, Mackel Downey is um, obviously a leading expert in this area, he's at the University of Warwick, uh, and his colleague. There's the uh, start of the uh, contents, you can see there's a large lot, it's separated into parts, um, and then there are acknowledgements, and then you've got an introduction. And the introduction sets the scene quite nicely for what you've got, because what you have here are um, quite a lot of extracts, uh, which will be of some help. For instance, let me give you an example. This is a, an extract from one of the contributors. Um, as I said, a lot of acknowledgements. It's a heavy book, very much in keeping with... Um, Elgar's uh, approach, Edward Elgar being an independent family business, um, they do go very much for the academic high end of the market and that's very much where this comes from. We've given it a title, not particularly original, but a title, Environmental Regulation, the 21st Century Challenge. Regulation is here to stay. I don't like it particularly. I think it's very bureaucratic and it, it gives people jobs when they probably don't need to have them, frankly. But there is, and that's my personal view, I hasten to add. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that we have regulation. There's a lot of it. One of the reasons the EU, anti-EU people are around is they don't like the huge amount of regulation that's come from the European Union. Some of it's good, some of it's bad, some of it's indifferent, but the fact is there's a lot of it. And in the environmental uh, area, it's particularly um, controversial to some people. However, what we've got here is a statement on where we are at the moment in this interesting work. And the editors of what we describe as a wide-ranging and insightful volume, that's Professor John uh, McEldowney and Sharon uh, McEldowney, again I hope I pronounced that correctly, have comply, uh, compiled an important collection of essays and learned articles gleaned mainly from a selection of influential and authoritative academic journals from both sides of the Atlantic and worldwide as well and that's very much in keeping with what um, Elgar produce. They're not books that are going to be you know huge big bestsellers but they really do give us the detail of the law, and I think that's very important for our common law tradition, apart from anything else. As I said, it's been published recently by Elgar, and the primary focus of the book is on environmental regulation in the UK, and it compares with other jurisdictions, mainly the USA and within the European Union, which I mentioned earlier. And the editors point out and explain that the papers chosen for inclusion in this volume contain a variety of themes and analyses that shed light on the differences and similarities that emerge internationally within the sphere of, environment, of environmental regulation. Legal and procedural principles are covered as well as the range of economic, social and political influences that may or may not affect the enactment not to mention the enforcement of environmental regulation, especially in areas where there is a marked conflict between protecting the environment and the desire for economic growth. We've got that with fracking. We've got that with a lot of things in this country alone. So you can see that there, at some stage, the state is going to start intervening, and it's inevitable, especially on an island as small as the, the UK. Um, part one of the book, for instance, offers a carefully considered examination of the interrelationship between environmental regulation 
sustainable development and climate change. You see, they're all linked together. Sustainable development, many people say, well, what does that really mean? What is sustainable in that sense? It's a sort of planning concept. At the end of the day, it's something, if sustained, means it's going to continue, but it's got to be beneficial. Of course, that would be the argument that, that probably environmentalists would put up. And hence the fact that there will have to be regulation. So you see, you see where we're coming from in terms of the general scheme of, 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 of what we are with environmental regulation as a whole. The seven sections that follow in the book deal variously with such areas as policy and governance, which is really what I've been just talking about, new technologies and economic development and human rights. The final section discusses the 21st century challenge, thereby making an interesting contribution to the debate on how the um, scholarship of environmental law might advance to meet future needs. And that's again possibly looking into the crystal ball a little bit, but it's, I think, very helpful. And probably a little bit lighter with after, after some of the heavier stuff that the two authors have, have um, decided to include. A point that's often stressed is that environmental regulation must be accountable, not to mention enforceable. Neither of these aims is easy to achieve in a world where most of the environmental pollution of late is produced not so much by the industrialised nations as by countries in a far less advanced stage of economic development. It's inevitable, frankly, it's inevitable that that's going to happen and we've got to see on the international stage what we might do about that in the longer term. So as part of the Elgar Research Collection, which is what this, this book is, it's definitely a book for academics and scholars as well as environmental lawyers who will appre appreciate, we think, its comparative law orientation and emphasis. It's also to be appreciated, we think, by researchers because there's copious footnoting throughout which contains a wealth of reference sources. There is, of course, no index, which perhaps that would have been quite helpful, I don't know, but um, I always find indexes quite useful because it gives a, a sort of more of a gloss about the book itself. But anyway, there isn't one with this, uh, this title. So in all, the book is a valuable and richly resourced contribution to the literature and environmental law and the publication date is 2014. I'm, I'm reviewing it in the summer of 2014 as we're sort of beginning to approach the autumn. The fracking row in the UK is building up and uh, it would be interesting to see how things go. So that's the book again. As I say, it's a heavy book, it's a, it's a hardback and then you see there's a very interesting chapter 13, the Environment Agency, lucky for some perhaps the origins of the Environment Agency and all of the problems. This year we had flooding, remember, at the beginning of the year, so we've got all sorts of issues that need to be looked at. Um, as I've indicated, there are um, a lot of acknowledgements which shows you where the, the actual information has come from. But I think this is a very interesting and a very useful book for anybody who's involved in environmental planning, that sort of area. I think it'd be useful for local authorities too, so it's not just a question for lawyers and academics, it's probably something that many local authorities might be interested in, especially in areas of outstanding natural beauty where you might be looking to try to preserve as much of what you've currently got without the invasion of uh, you know, new technologies and new discoveries, if I can put it that way. Thank you to all concerned anyway, it's a very good book and as I say do look on the web and in the journals for our review. Thank you very much, bye bye.